Hi guys, I'm here in Prague with this wonderful man, Anthony Lauder. And uh, my little doggy in the background. And, and the little doggy in the background. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought we would make a video uh, speaking about language learning because this man, I don't know if uh, any of you, uh, you know, knows Anthony Lauder. He's like, what's your, what's your YouTube channel or something like that? Uh, well, now you can just search my name, Anthony Lauder, and, and it'll be on YouTube. Or oh, the old name is Fluent Check. Fluent Check, right. And he talks about language learning. He's got wonderful videos, and you should definitely check them out. Uh, today we're going to talk about something interesting. I'm in Prague, and I thought I might as well make a video about language learning, because we talk about that uh, as well as, obviously, other things. And we're going to talk about speaking uh, fluently. What does it mean to be fluent in a foreign language? So, Anthony, uh, what does it mean to be fluent in a foreign language? You tell me, Luca. You're the expert. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> what do I mean by it? A lot of people think it means sounding exactly like a native speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, it's more about the language flowing in two senses. The first one is that it flows out of your mouth without huge gaps and without stuttering and so on. But more importantly, it's about flowing in conversations between people. It's very easy to have a monologue, but to have a conversation backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards is what real fluency is about to me. Right. So you think that people... Uh, think you have to know a lot of words to speak. Uh... Yeah, this is a really big trap. Actually, the idea that you really need a massive vocabulary. I often say that I had to learn in one language class loads of names of fishes and plants that I will never ever use. But people in the same class as me couldn't say anything. They couldn't even use a five word sentence. And that's really struck me as completely useless. I believe you need to be fluent. You can gain fluency with a very small vocabulary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very wise man. You have to listen to him. So, so you're what you're saying is that basically, uh, you might know a lot of words, but you can't string sentences together. And but there are people actually who know not that many words, few words, who can actually have conversations. Is that really possible? Can you, can you give the people who are listening to us some advice on how to do that? Because one thing is to talk about it. One thing is to actually do it. So. What you speak for in Czech, right? Because we are here in Prague, once again, and you you you've been learning Czech for what? Uh, few years, few years. Few years. Well, well, you've heard me speaking. Can I speak any Czech? Do you think? Of course. Of course yeah, you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, we were, so. we were around. He was like, uh, you know, talking to the ladies with doggies because we got this wonderful dog here. So <laughs> we were chatting with the ladies. Um, yeah, you tell me what what happened because now you speak Czech, so you know you're not conscious. Maybe you don't even remember how it was to try to learn the language, I, I remember, speak a little bit, bits and pieces. With I remember it very well. I, I, I was taking a few language classes and I noticed that many of the people had a very big vocabulary, but they really felt that the words were trapped in them and they couldn't come out. So I thought, these classes are pretty useless. There must be something else going on. There must be a conversational abil ability that's got nothing to do with having a massive vocabulary. So I looked at it and I, I discovered that the language that people were using in conversations wasn't the same kind of stuff that we were talked about in class. And you can learn to have a conversation with a very limited vocabulary. And then once you've got that speaking ability going, as you add future vocabulary, it then has some context, some, some framework to fit into. Otherwise, you're learning endless lists and you'll never say anything. Now, I've noticed that a couple of very well-respected polyglots say, well, I don't do that. I don't have conversations till I've got a massive vocabulary. But the, more, the important point here is that they've already been through the process of speaking in other languages. And I think it's a skill that once you've got over this fear, of the, over the hurdle, once you've got a general speaking ability, it transfers that skill with other languages. That the, You don't have the fear anymore. You realize that you will be able to speak. But when you're uh, early in language learning, perhaps it's your first language, getting over the hurdle, you can do it very quickly. Once you've got over it, the fear goes away. Right, but somebody might retort to you that, okay, you can speak a little bit, of course you can put these words together, but what happens if you don't actually understand what people say? Because it's always, communication is always bi-directional. Yes, you it talk is. And, then... and uh, you know, even though I speak Czech well, people, I, there are still things I don't understand. And I've noticed that when you're a beginner, if you say to somebody, I need train, where go, they'll realize you're not fantastic and they'll use simple <clears throat> language themselves. The person you're speaking with 
this is the important thing in a conversation, they adjust their level to you. And even at my level, even though I speak Czech well, when I'm in a group of Czechs, they adjust their level, cutting down on the slang, cutting down on the obscure cultural references. We naturally all want the conversation to flow. We don't want it to be painful, so both sides are trying. So would your advice actually for uh, beginners or people who just started learning a language to have conversations with language partners instead of throwing themselves at people on the street where the situation is a little bit difficult, they might not understand. Like, imagine that you and I were having a conversation in Italian. I know you already know you speak a little bit of Italian, but I actually had conversations in Japanese where I found out that even if I didn't understand words of stuff, she, my, my Japanese tutor, uh, she was wonderful because, for example, when she was saying, everybody would understand if I do this, like, you know, so comprehensible input is also made with gestures. Right. Not only with you can speak slowly, you can adjust the level, but you have a lot of like I can show, I can understand. This is comprehensible input showing stuff, but we're able to even show verbs. You know, by doing this or walking, or obviously you can't represent everything. You can't represent nostalgia. How do you represent that? That's difficult. But the basics you can. So. I don't think it's necessarily true that you don't understand anything if you don't have input. You do, so you believe in this. Well, I actually uh, believe you can speak without having much input to tell you. You know, the, the way I see it is that for me, the purpose of having a conversation isn't to impress the other person. It's not so they'll think, wow, he's like a native speaker. It's to actually accomplish a conversational goal, to be understood. Yeah. People have lost this, have lost sight, have uh, lost sight of this. Speaking language communication. It's for communication. Person. And so, what I would say, I, I, I saw a video just last night where some man said, I don't want to have a conversation until I can discuss politics, world affairs and history. Mm -hmm. Now, that's great. It's a fine goal, but 99% of the conversations I have in the real world are not on politics and philosophy. It's things like, oh... My foot's hurting. Yeah. Do you have some cream, please, to make the pain go away? Or I or walk the dog. Women say, how old is your dog? He's, he's ever so cute. You know, these are not complex topics. So practicing language in... in re you talk about the language partner, but even in real life, you can just have simple conversations, like how much is the bus ticket? These kind of real-life conversations will build your confidence. Yes. Anthony, thanks so much. You see this My pleasure. very wise. Take care from Prague. Hugs, a lot of hugs from Prague. Ciao.